so they pulled slowly and softly. As they drew close, the sound became even louder, and they kept going. Opopo was a very beautiful riverine village, where the majority of its inhabitants were fishermen and women, while others were petty farmers. Opopo had two major markets, the general market, which held every five days, and the fish market, which was open every single day, as the fishermen and women went fishing every day. Opopo was a major supplier of fish around our environs, the fishes from Opupu were exported to the city for bigger sales and better pay. It was indeed the best and the most lucrative business in Opupu village. In Opupu, there lived two brothers who were fishermen, Otu the eldest and Abe the youngest. Otu was married with two kids while Abe was engaged to a beautiful girl named Labi, a beautiful and a kind woman from Opupu village. Otu and his brother Abi were the highest suppliers of fish in Opupu because of their fishing skills as they fearlessly went to the deepest parts of the ocean to fish. They could navigate treacherous waters and bring back a bountiful catch each day. One fateful morning, as the brothers were pulling in their nets, heavy with the day's bounty, they heard a soft melodic voice singing a beautiful tune. Intrigued, Abi was eager to know where the voice was coming from. But Otu said, Do you know where that sound is coming from? What if it's a trap? Abe said, What if the person is in trouble? What if the person needs our help? Abe insisted that they go check it out. So they pulled slowly and softly. As they drew close, the sound became even louder and they kept going. They followed the sound until they stumbled upon a stranded mammid, a shimmering tail caught in a tangle of seaweed. Moved by compassion, Abe offered to help her. But Otu was afraid, and he said to his brother, Namami Watao. But Abe approached the distressed mammid and carefully freed her. Grateful for their assistance, the mammid promised to repay their kindness. She couldn't stop thinking about how good looking Abe was. She was already blushing, full of love. She couldn't just wait for the morning so she would see Abe again. The next morning, she went to that same spot and sang in a very beautiful and soft tune like the other day, hoping they would pass by. Soon, the brothers drew close to the sound as they went fishing. It was their usual route to fishing. Listen, the voice sounds like that mommy water you saved yesterday, Otu said. Hey, yes, oh. She is the one. Maybe she is waiting for us to appreciate us for yesterday. So they went to her. When they got there, Abe couldn't resist the beauty of the mermaid. Their eyes quickly ran into each other, gazing directly at each other's eyes. Slain with love, Abe was speechless. The mermaid said, I thought to say thank you, so I came here. I was thinking perhaps you would pass by, as my instincts directed me. And you did pass by. I have brought this gift for you and your elder brother for saving my life. You didn't have to do that, Otu said. It's the least I can do for saving my life. She handed the gift over to Otu, the eldest. Abe was engrossed with her beauty and speechless staring at her. Sorry, I forgot to introduce myself. My name is Amani. The brothers also introduced themselves. Abe whispered in Amani's ear. Meet me here tomorrow by 4 p.m. She smiled and nodded in agreement. So the brothers left and continued their journey. They had a very great catch that day and made a lot of sales after selling the fishes in the market. Abe couldn't stop thinking about her money. She also was thinking about him all night. And as their meeting time drew near, her money dressed eagerly to meet Abe. Her friends noticed the change in her attitude, always smiling and blushing like... Someone who is in love. Amani, who is he? No one, she said, smiling. I will tell you about it when I return. Return? From where? I will tell you everything, I promise. Just wait until I get back. Okay, oh. So they agreed. As soon as she arrived there, Abby was already approaching the place. She was really excited. They started discussing playing, and she brought gifts of pearls and all manner of precious stones. 
for Abe. He gave her a kiss that sunk down into her spine. She actually felt it. Mm. When will you take me to see your world? She said. Soon you will. Don't worry. But how can you walk on your feet since you don't have legs like me? Don't worry about that as long as I don't get myself wet. Really? Then that's fine. Abby said. When she returned, her friends were already at her place waiting to get the full gist of everything that happened. She kept smiling as her heart was beating so fast. I think I'm in love. Who's this person? They asked. Please don't shout when I tell you. Okay, we won't. They agreed. He's a human. A human? Girl, how did you do it? I've always wanted to taste a human. Can, can we see him? Don't worry, you will see him soon. She replied. Days became weeks and weeks, months. As they saw each other every single day at their usual spot, each visit was with a gift. Soon, he stopped fishing. He said to himself, I have too much wealth now. All I need to do is to just continue with her money and she'll keep bringing gifts for me. By the time I sell off all these gifts, I'll be a very rich man. So, so why do I need to go fishing again? One day, Otu said to Abe, Be careful, my brother. I'm not sure you really love her money. You thought you did, but you're now consumed by the gifts and not love. Remember, you're engaged. I beg, forget that engagement. I'm talking about her money. Who gives me everything I want? You're talking about one stupid engagement. Can't you see that you don't love her? But the gifts she shares on you. But her money loves you so much. From the first day, I saw it in her eyes. My brother, be careful, oh. Now, mommy, what are you they play with? Don't say I didn't warn you. Don't worry. Everything is under control, bro. If you say so, Oti replied. One day, Amani went to their usual spot and this time she went with her friends. When they saw Abe, they were all speechless, lost in thoughts. They continued to stare at him in amazement. They've never seen a human as charming as Abe. Kari, one of Amani's friends, said in her heart, This Amani is a wicked girl. Look at what she's enjoying alone. So she plotted a way to get Abe for herself. One day, Amani fell ill. And wasn't able to see Abby. So she sent Carrie to go to their spot and deliver the message to Abby. That was Carrie's chance to snatch Abby from Amani. She went with numerous gifts, more than Amani had ever brought. Abby was consumed by the greed of more gifts. As Carrie told him that she liked him, he said, I like you too, because he wanted the gift. Soon he had another spot for Carrie. And another time for her so it doesn't affect his time with Amani. Before long, he had an affair with all Amani's friends. And gradually, all the most beautiful mermaids in the ocean fell for him. He embraced them all, receiving gifts from them every single day. He kept bringing piles of gifts home, planning to sell everything to take the money and run away from the village. His greed and quest for more kept expanding. He completely left his engagement with Labi. He saw the mermaid as a business and soon his greed will land him into the trouble of his life. Otu, witnessing his brother descent into greed, could no longer watch his brother destroy himself. So he pleaded with him, Brother, the gifts may bring temporary joy, but the consequences of your action may be grave. Remember the harmony we once shared with the ocean. And let not your desires cloud your judgment. Yet Abbe remained unmoved, blinded by his insatiable appetite for more. The mermaids, growing desperate to win his affection, offered him their most precious possessions. Some days later, Amani got back to their usual spot and it came as though nothing had happened. They continued their love affair. One day, while swimming through the ocean, Amani saw Abby with her friend Carrie playing. She was so mad, but she didn't confront them. When Carrie returned, she asked her, What are you doing with my man? You're so wicked, Amani. How can you have such a handsome human all to yourself? I like him too. And you're not going to be the only one sailing this ship. 
Amani was so angry, she called all her friends. How many of you are seeing my man? They, they all admitted, I like him too. I'm having an affair with him. And she discovered that all her friends were having an affair with Abe. So the battle to be chosen began. They kept showering gifts on him and he never stopped taking. He kept receiving. The battle struck in the ocean as the mermaids would fight themselves. The once peaceful mermaids became quarrelsome as they would fight each other because of Abe. Soon the news got to the queen and the ruler of the ocean and she summoned all the mermaids involved with Abe. They all gathered round her as she began to question them one after the other. Amani said, My queen, I met him first. Then I introduced him to my friends, and they took him from me. I thought they were my friends. Amani, I have always known that you have a very big heart. You trust too much, and that's your problem. Sometimes you let your results speak, not you telling people about your process. They'll follow the process and get the result before you. Never share your personal affairs with your friends. You've learned the hard way. But I still love him. That's the problem with your money. Does he love you the same? Now listen, all of you. I have always told you to stay away from these humans. That they will destroy you, but you refuse to listen. Though I have come across some really good ones, but the majority of them are evil. You're all sisters and daughters of the ocean. How dare you fight yourselves because of a mere mortar? How disappointing. Now listen, the man you're fighting and dying to get doesn't love any of you. I'm sure he loves me, Amani said. But the queen continued. Did before greed crawled into his heart and overshadowed his sense of reasoning. All he wants is to get gifts from you. Can't you see? Sell them and be wealthy. And then leave all of you by traveling out of the village. They didn't believe. The queen then brought out a bowl and played before them his conversations with his brother. They saw how the brother warned him. His plans to make more money from them by receiving gifts. And most of all, the engagement with Labi. They were so furious and decided he must pay for playing with all of them. All the women he had an affair with sought to destroy the entire village. They will never get a single fish from the ocean. But the queen said, I will permit you to do whatever you want to do with him, but leave the village out of it. For the sake of the brother who always rebuked and warned him about his actions, let the village go. Deal with the culprit. Devour him. Do as you please with him. So they decided they would drown him in the ocean and allow him to be eaten by sea beasts. But Amani pleaded with them. Because she sincerely loved him, she said, He saved my life. I know he did wrong. He is a good man. It's just that he allowed greed to consume him. I would have been dead by now if he didn't risk his own life to save me. Please, my sisters, just for this reason, let him live. So they had compassion on him because of her money. But they took everything from him and shared them equally amongst themselves. But Amani took a portion and gave them to Otu, her best brother. She said to him, You're a good man. You deserve this and more. You've been by your brother. It's just that he refused to listen. He's a good man too, but I don't know why he allowed greed to come into his heart and destroy his soul. They afflicted Abe with an incurable disease, which he struggled with for the rest of his life, and he died as a single man and never had kids because of his greed. And he was never married. The moral of the story is that greed is like a wildfire. It starts gradually, without you even knowing. And before you know it, it spread uncontrollably until it lands you into the trouble of your life. Gehazi in the Bible inherited the cause of leprosy, which affected his entire generation because of greed. Secondly, learn to shut your mouth. Allow your results to speak. When you tell people your process... They will get your results. If Amani had kept quiet, no one would have known about Abby. Perhaps they would have gotten married. She lost the love of her life because she opened her mouth. Shut your mouth.